I just want to tell you how glad I am to see you all out at a rock group tonight or today if you're meeting during the day. And um, just uh, think that it's fantastic that you're willing to sacrifice and take the time. Shouldn't even be a sacrifice. This is a great time to come out and hang out with your friends and make friends and be part of the body of Christ. Let's face it, for 2,000 years, that has been the body of Christ, is when we get together, we fellowship, we break bread, we get into the apostles' teaching and to prayer. So that's what happens in our rock group, and they're really the backbone of everything that happens at River Rock, happens in our rock groups. So this is our third week of Fearless. And of course, the first week we saw Jesus and the disciples going across the Sea of Galilee and getting stuck in the boat and the boat was going to sink and they were wondering if Jesus cared or Jesus could save them. And of course, he did and it was all good. Then the second week, we talked about the orphan spirit and we went to John chapter 14, verse 18. And we talked about when Jesus come and says, I will not leave you as orphans, but I will come to you. We talked about how in order to walk without fear, you have to know God really in your heart, not just in your head, but you have to know God can save you and that he wants to save you and that you're a child of God. So now week three, Second Chronicles chapter 20, which is just one of my favorite stories in the entire Bible. And this is King Jehoshaphat and um, he gets attacked by three different armies. And you know, a lot of the times for us living in America, it's hard for us to understand what fear really is. I mean, you know, we get afraid because we're not going to make the rent or um, uh, I don't want to downplay. Some of you may have had some very fearful experiences in your life. I certainly have, but nothing like three marauding armies coming to, you know, kill us and have their way with our wives and daughters and take our children into slavery and destroy our country. I mean, I don't think that we've really had a fear of that. Even World War II, I'm not sure. I wasn't alive then, but I'm not sure if people really were even that afraid. But here you have this situation where three armies are coming at your country. You're way outnumbered. And um, and they're not just coming to take us over and, well, we're going to have a different government now. They're coming to kill us and to, like I said, have their way with our wives and chill and daughters and, and take our sons into slavery. You know, this is, this is a big, big deal. And um, the big lesson this week is to watch how do we deal with fear? How do we deal with situations that are out of our control. And so what we do, first thing we see is the king gets up and humbles himself before God, acknowledges to God that ah, we, are, we can't do this. We can't win this battle. And so they call a fast. And fasting and prayer is so important. And I've asked all of you to fast one day every 60 days and to email prayer at riverrockchristianfellowship.com and let Pastor Lisa know what day you're fasting. And I know a lot of people are like, oh, well, I just fast. And But in this story, we see that the king calls a fast. And there's a power when we're all working together. And that's part of what the rock groups are all about, is working together, being a team, not being independent. In fact, um, when Dutch Sheets and Chuck Pierce talk about Nevada. They talk about the one of the greatest uh, demonic principalities is that spirit of independence and how that makes it difficult for the army of God to go forward because if you're all going your own way and going, well, I'm just going to do my own thing, that doesn't work very well. So here we see this situation where the king calls a fast, they stand together, and they get to watch to see that the battle is the Lord's. And I cannot tell you how many battles that I've seen the Lord win in my life. And I think the longer we walk with the Lord, the more mature we get in the Lord, the more we understand that the Lord has to fight our battles and we need to know how to position ourselves correctly for God to win. 
And it's like uh, 2 Chronicles 7, 14, humbling yourself before the Lord, fasting, praying, asking God to heal our land. Again, we see Jehoshaphat calling a fast, praying. And that's what this is all about. It's about watching God do victory in our life. So um, it's just a great story. And um, a couple of points, I'm just taking a look at my notes. Um, God gives them wisdom and knowledge, even though they might not have had the gift of wisdom, gift of knowledge, God gave it to them. God gave them the directions to win the battle, okay? And of course, near the end, it's wonderful. We see the, they get the spoils. And of course, we're all about the, the, the wealth of the wicked being stored up for the righteous. And you see, it took them three days to pick up the spoils. So not only do they win, not only are they not killed, you know, their families are not abused and destroyed and taken into slavery, but they actually spend three days collecting spoils. So, okay, so now I want to go through just a couple of questions. I actually only have two tonight. Um, the first one is just the getting together and getting to know each other. Tell, uh, tell a story in your life when you had maybe a time when there really was, you know, um, a threat against your life. Uh, I know I tell a story, and I'm not going to tell it here because it's too long to tell here, but when I, I used to own gold mines up in Northern California, and uh, this guy decided he didn't want me to be on my own gold mine and uh, took a gun and started shooting at me. And the bullets were whizzing past my head, and I don't know, it just wasn't real to me at the time. Even though when I heard the bullets whizzing past my head, I'm like... God, this guy's really shooting at me, you know? And his wife came out of the bushes behind him and grabbed his gun hand with both her hands and looked at me and just said, run. And I'm like, yeah, maybe that's a good idea. So I got up into my truck and took off. And, um, you know, I was pretty calm during the time, but it was like a half hour later, all of a sudden my palms got sweaty and I had to pull the truck over and just take a breather and go, wow, you know, that guy was really going to kill me. So um, that's my story about that. So you might share a story like that uh, amongst your friends. And then the second one, this is a little bit of a long chapter as well, but it's a good one. It's Judges chapter 20. In Judges chapter 20, we see a lot of the similarities with um, Second Chronicles chapter 20. So why don't you read Judges chapter 20 and look and find some similarities and differences uh, in Judges chapter 20. Focusing on, you know, the, the real core thing is, you know, facing real fears, life-threatening fears, and then giving it over to the Lord and saying, God, we can't do it. You have to do it. And then in the end, if there is a third question, it would go something like this. It would go, you know, how do you take what you've learned in Judges 20 and Second Chronicles 20 and apply it to your own life? How, when you're threatened... Do you turn it over to God? Do you acknowledge to God? Remember, Jehoshaphat is going, hey, God, we can't do it. We acknowledge you are God and we're not. And so, um, you know, talk about that and, um, and talk about how you actually can react to dangerous things happening in your life and, um, and how you can turn it over to God. So anyway, thank you very much. I went a little long tonight, but uh, this is a very good story. This is very good. Lots of really life-changing things to learn in these books, in these two stories. So this is an important one. So let me pray for you. So Father God, I just pray for this rock group right now. I pray that they just have a great time getting to know each other and uh, fellowshipping, breaking bread, um, and learning the apostles' teaching. And so Father God, I pray as they study the word and share that it's going to be a powerful night, and they're going to have a great time now. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, great. Have a wonderful rock group meeting, and I'll see you next week.